Greetings and salutations, nerdy planet Earth. It is Tone Bone back with another interview with the greats, the show where we interview the greatest people on the planet. Today, my guests not only include the voice of the best Pokemon of all time, but a truly unique medical worker, Tara Sands and Megan Hollingshead. How are you two doing today? Hi. Excellent. <laughs> Hi. Thank yes. you so much for having us today. I'm glad to a have you. A unique medical worker. I yes. Like yeah, that's a good True. way to say it, right? Truly one of a kind. <laughs> or not or so a million of a kind. <laughs> We don't know how that happens in that uh, <laughs> in that world, but we're we're happy to have the millions of you that are in one. Um, so now, before we get to the questions, um, I just want to show the connection that Tara and I have. Well, I can't show it. I tried before, and <laughs> it looks awkward, kind of looking up my shorts. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Tara and I met, was it three years ago at the Albuquerque Comic Con? Awesome. And uh, Bulbasaur being my favorite Pokemon, I had at that point, did I, I already had the Bulbasaur the first time, right? Yeah, you did. You had okay. it on your leg. I had Bulbasaur and then Pikachu on the back of both of my legs and they're making it look like they're doing a high five. And Tara was there and I'm like, I'm probably never going to get another chance to meet her again. So I had her sign the, her character card and her signature in a clear spot and I have your lovely signature on me forever now right under my Bulbasaur. You are the only one that I've seen a lot of Bulbasaur tattoo work but yours is definitely one of a kind and I think it's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's extremely cool. I got to see it before the interview and it's for real. He it's had to do some quick. like acrobatic work to, to show us at the back of his leg but it was worth it. Yeah. Have you shown it on your show yet? Um, Do you have still pictures, maybe? Yeah, that's um, some of the things may or may not have just on the images. I forgot to actually tell you when we were doing that before, but I just got a new one, and it is Pokemon related. Let's well, see it. Half of it anyway, so let me. Wow. Wow. Wow, that's beautiful. That's fantastic. I am too wussy to get a tattoo, so I admire everyone else's. Sarah, like I said, if you, if you, even if you can't come back, I'll sponsor your first tattoo. I won't. I will never do it. <laughs> and it doesn't have to I'm be my to signature. Be. <laughs> <laughs> but it should. It really should, Tara. Oh, I, I couldn't do that to her. Oh my God! I just now I just wanted that in Sharpie on my arm. Like I just want to. Oh my gosh! I always have a Sharpie. I just am always ready with the Sharpie. Yeah, so it's really smart. <laughs> so now, um, you two are, have numerous roles between you two, probably about, uh, about 400 credited, but obviously voices themselves, you both have probably done over like three, 4,000. Does that sound about fair? That's high, but that's, uh, yeah, I think that's but, crazy. Pants. But I'll say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like maybe like four or five million, actually. <laughs> Tara's done about 3,999. <laughs> I've done two or three. <laughs> well, no, they kept uh, us busy. They definitely kept us busy when we were in the booth. And the sad thing is, is we never, I mean, maybe you did, Megan, but I never took notes about who I played back no, then. No, now I'm still piecing it together based yeah. on like fan sites and, um, yeah, I'll watch old episodes and I'll be like, oh, that was me. Yeah. Sometimes I can't even tell. Can you always yeah. tell? Uh, no. <laughs> I'm like, I think it is. I got yelled at recently because I had something miscredited. I had gotten the list off of a fan site and I had a character on a picture that I didn't play. Oh, you had it on a picture? I, I just took their word for it. And I went back and listened. I was like, it does sound like me, but it, I don't think it is. And I had to reprint, now I'm reprinting a bunch of. Yeah. I got credited on IMDb with Mortal Kombat. And I, I was like, I don't, I don't think I did that. <laughs> I wrote to someone else. I wrote to someone who directed it. And I was like, does that, Am I in that? Would I, did I do that? And he's like, no, <laughs> no, you never did that. Oh, God. That would have well, been cool. <laughs> Did I have fun? <laughs> How was I? <laughs> fabulous, fabulous. Well, we can certainly cover some shows that you both have, can confirm that you did. Yes. Of course, the biggest being Pokemon, both 
back in the very original series, as well as joining right now, um, released on Netflix a couple of days ago, Journeys. Yes. Yay! Woo! Pokemon Journeys! Woo-woo! And I just started watching the first couple episodes this morning. Unfortunately, Megan, I did not get to an episode with Nurse Joy yet. <sighs> Interview over. <laughs> no. I'm in the same boat as your kids, so you really can't. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was saying earlier, for those of you who, for those of you who aren't the three of us who talked about, um, I, <laughs> I planted my kids in front of the TV and I said, don't stop watching until my character comes on. <laughs> they said, mommy, we watched two Before episodes. you're punished. <laughs> was Bruce Joy in them? Then go back to watching them. <laughs> no, but they love it. They're now like... Pokemon Journeys is their favorite. Wow. They want Score Bunny. They want mm-hmm. Pikachu. They want Yamper. Pokemon. Yamper. Yamper. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Yamper is adorable. Tara Sands. I know Megan's children and they might oh. get phone calls from Yamper. <laughs> they would like um they would like balloon animals shaped like Yamper. <laughs> I have made balloon animals for Megan's children. <laughs> what? Did you oh, know God. That Tara Sands makes balloon animals? No, I did not. Yeah. <laughs> do you have your own little, what did you do? Go I have to... a pump and everything. <laughs> I used to, in um, college, as a side job, I, on the weekends, I did children's birthday parties. Oh, so, so good. So I learned how to make balloon animals. And now, um, in order to get my friend's children to like me more, um, I present them with balloon animals. <laughs> Because sometimes children are, are, you know, they don't, they take a little while to warm up. Uh, but if you hand them a balloon in the shape of a dog, forget about it. They're putty, putty in your hands. <laughs> totally. Totally. <laughs> so, um, yes, yeah, so we could go into the characters now. Um, Megan, you are reprising your role as Nurse Joy. Now, Tara, I know you're not for Bulbasaur, but you are playing another main Pokemon, Yamper. It's a cute little, it's supposed to be like a corgi, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's so cute. A little I electric have... dog. <gasps> oh. I ordered a plug. Again, again, let me see. Yeah, show it first. Oh. Uh, and show the butt. Come on. It's the... Oh, well, there's tags on his butt. <laughs> He's from the Pokemon. I got him from the Pokemon store. I oh, actually wow. ordered. <laughs> they don't, give, we don't, yeah, I actually bought a few. because. No, wait, is Yamper new? Yes. Yes. Is a brand well, not new. like as of today. He emperor's no. been a- around, but he hasn't been on the anime yet. She, he, I don't actually know. They. <laughs> the emperor hasn't been on the anime, but help us, Tony. Oh, I'm not that much. I'm I'm a Gen One or mostly, so that's why my love yeah. for, of course, Tara and you is so much because the past old school fifteen years old in old between old have been have been void of you guys. So that's maybe why I've fallen back on. Yeah, I mean, I think Yamper was introduced in, like, the cards and the games and things like that. Um, and I believe, I mean, I could be wrong, but um, this is what I think, uh, that this is uh, Yamper's first time in the anime itself. But Got him. people knew who Yamper, because I was able to find, like, Yamper merch way before uh, the show aired, so. Nice. Okay. You weren't able to show it to people. I wasn't able to show I, I bought it. I was, like, hoarding it. Hoarding it. It was so <laughs> exciting. Oh, it's so good. Right? Yeah. I've yeah. never had a plushie of any of my characters. So I'm I'm having plushie envy. Oh, somebody, anyone, someone watching this, make Megan a Nurse Joy plushie, please. Yeah. I'll buy yes. it. Okay, wait, I'm lying, because there was a Nurse Joy plushie. Um, okay. I take it back. <laughs> Don't do that. I told I'm you not that. for anything, because Megan's a liar. <laughs> <laughs> but a plushie She's... person isn't as cute as a plushie animal. I know, potato, potato. Still a liar. <laughs> Still a liar. <laughs> so somebody just needs to make you as people your own plushies, or is maybe that a little too creepy? <laughs> Totally creepy. That yeah. sounds like a voodoo doll. Yeah. That's just, and those are oh. not kind of. Um, the other thing I want is a, are we listing things we want? Sure, <laughs> yes. go ahead. I want a Funko Pop. There's no Nurse Joy Funko. Yeah. That's, There's that's, no, is there an opposite to anyone? Funko. Funkos. Not for Pokemon yet. Huh. It was there, no, there's no Ash, is there? There's no Ash, no. Uh, I finally got one. My hair's a mess. <laughs> Hi, sorry. You look great. Um, so now in the 20 years that we've had Pokemon, which is insane to think, um, <laughs> which you both don't look a day over 29. Um, That's the right thing to say. Yes. That, um, 
you know, now, especially me, like I said, someone who's grown up with it and who has tattoos of it's a Gen 1 Pokemon, uh, having my kids watch it now, uh-huh. one of the one of the kind of best and worst things of watching Journeys today, actually, my son asked every time a new Pokemon showed up, what's that one's name? And I'm like, oh. and I could go so far. And then the newer ones came out and I'm like, um. <laughs> There's 17 million Pokemon at this point, I believe. Right. So it's okay. Eight, 800 times all of those and then the shinies and there's too much to keep track of. But somebody knows. Somebody well, I'm knows. sure. And like alphabetical order and numerical order. Lisa Ortiz knows, I guess. She <laughs> directs the show, so she <laughs> has to know everything. We should make I, her name them all. I used to know the 151 in number order by heart because I had the poster on my wall. Yes. Well, I, I well, can't that, I mean, that's that impressive. Anymore. Yeah, that's completely impressive. So uh, going back, obviously, the, the industry has changed quite a bit from 20 years ago to now. Everybody either having to go to the studio and now where you can record your own homes, which Megan, we can see behind your little booth there. Um, what's, what would you say is probably the biggest difference aside from accessibility as far as recording? Yes, obviously technology did change everything. Um, but for me, the biggest difference was that uh, the way the Pokemon speak is different now. Um, we used to be much more concerned with saying their name. Uh, you can hear it when you watch the show. I'm not giving anything away. Um, you can hear their names much more clearly in the early episodes. And now um, things, uh, oh, yeah. creatures like Yamper, we work in much more like animalistic sounds. Mm-hmm. So that took a lot of get, you know, just adjusting and getting used to because my instinct was to really overpronounce the name. And um, Lisa was like, no, no, get some panting in there and, you know, real puppy uh, was still with matching the, the lip flap, but just a different approach to the characters, which was fun. It was, but it, you know, cause I feel like, oh, I know I've done this forever. You know, it's nice to kind of be humbled and be like, oh, this is a different, is a different system now. And, a, and it's so great that it's Lisa because she has been there throughout it. And um, it's not that I would not take direction from someone else, but it's way easier when it's her. Right. Uh, take the direction. So do do Yamper. Can you? Are you allowed to? I don't know. It's it's yamper, 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 yamper. So it's a lot of that instead of like Yamper, you know, like instead of saying yeah. Bulbasaur, you know. So because Bulbasaur was, we were very, you know, it was, and it was also. I think the difference was kids were learning those Gen One names at the time, and right, I, I, you know, from what I hear, that was the w- reason they said their names was because whoever created it wanted them to remember their names. So that's why like, we'll have them keep saying them. Mm-hmm. Now kids have, you know, they go on the internet, they can find all their names. You know, it's, there's many more tools at their disposal um, to, to, to look all that stuff up. So I, I think, you know, and now there's just so many, I think they have to keep them all separate in different ways. <laughs> yeah. 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 Similarly, um, same. Lisa said, do it more realistic. Like Nurse Joy's first line is was something like um next time use the driveway like no one would accuse her of being too realistic (laughs) (laughs) very anime and uh now sorry i love you (laughs) i just i'm so happy to see you (laughs) (laughs) now lisa was like no more like more like um like she tries to be so nice more like um like you're talking to a real person. <laughs> That's what she, like act better. <laughs> I want you to think of like you're a real person talking to a real person. <laughs> she said <so> diplomatic. <laughs> How does that get more that seems so abstract then at that point? Well it's so like, oh yeah, I do it every day, but apparently I'm getting direction on it now. Oh yeah. Well, you know, it, when when we're voicing cartoons, there's a big variety of how cartoony you want to be. And nine times out of 10, when we get direction for auditions, they say realistic, natural. Mm-hmm. Now, how often when you watch cartoons or anime, is it realistic and natural? Sometimes, sometimes, yeah. um, but mostly rarely. So... As actors, we're constantly navigating that um, spectrum of realistic to crazy over the top cartoony. Mm-hmm. And it's sort of like this 
a different world in between where it's realistic for a cartoon. (laughs) So it's like, there's a read that is heightened, but that's not going to make parents' ears bleed. You know, I think there's this weird middle ground. I I always think about that when I'm recording, like, what won't a parent hate? That's good. That's good. I don't know if I said that. That's a good one. I've never tried that. Yeah. Yeah. Then I'm, you know, sometimes the voices I'm doing are so irritating that um, there's, I know a parent's going to be like, please just watch anything but that. Um. (laughs) Well, I mean, a lot of the... Like that, though. I haven't, I haven't heard too much. Just, yeah. just to just Do your kids watch anything that you can't stand listening to? Um, not really, because I try and influence them to watch the shows I want to watch. So that's smart. So if it is Pokemon or Yu-Gi-Oh, which we'll get into in a minute, Sailor Moon, my son. Uh, oh, good. So when about three and a half, he basically binged all of Sailor Moon and Crystal. I mean, obviously he's not comprehending the themes of it, but he's like he knows which Sailor Scout is which, and the you know monster and all these kind of things Aww. so uh-huh. he recognizes that and now that we're watching journeys he'll certainly be like which one's that and then after probably the 300th time i've said it he'll remember <laughs> mm-hmm. he but really he, needs you to be like yamper <laughs> yeah. yamper there's there will be a test yeah but he knows he, bulbasaur he and pikachu yeah. very well because he, go he, <laughs> he climbs on my legs and he at least remembers those two really well so Aww, sweet. Really adorable. My son is actually named after an anime character, so I kind of just you. go that little bit much more. Is his name Nurse Joy? <laughs> <laughs> oh. I had to. I had to. <laughs> what um, is his name? His name Meow. is Shen. Sorry. That's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, That's I don't name. know. Shenji. Um, it's Neon Genesis Evangelion. Oh, wow. Oh, cool. That's so awesome. Not, yeah, that, that main character. Great name. That's a great, that is a great name. But I've yet to meet Spike Spencer. He's never, I've seen Tara a couple of times and I get to meet you, but I haven't. Um, oh, he'll be around but... once this all comes back. He'll be oh, around. Yeah. Him, sure. For sure. Every, every, everybody will need the work. I feel like I did a con with Spike like way back in when Pokemon first came out. Well, so you know, awesome. Spike was at a convention when the shutdown happened and he is still living in Australia right now. Yeah. He was at a convention there and they decided to stay. That's brilliant. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, it's a little spike trivia for you. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> so you never so, know. You're, no, you don't. Your only con could, could be your last and you might just live there. Wow. Wow. All right. If, if, let's hope it never does happen again, but Megan and Tara, if it's here, I'll be glad to take you guys in. We'll live in Albuquerque. No so rent. Thank you. Thank you very much. How are things in Albuquerque? Um, good. We're one of the states who have like the best records. Our governor was very smart to act quickly, and um, our numbers are doing really well. Most everything's relaxed, minus uh, bars and clubs, but those are about to be relaxed as well. Wow. Okay. All right then. So we're doing good, doing good on oh, that front. Let's go, Tara. I was going to wear my mask for this interview. Oh. Would they weird? I'm just kidding. No, it wouldn't. That's awesome. I'm the only one here. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll go ahead and cover a couple of shows in between since we started with Pokemon. We'll kind of end with Pokemon. A couple in between and then we'll hit Yu-Gi-Oh! Is, um, so Sailor Moon, both of you were in. No. And a lot yes, of- Yes, you have. You've never been on Sailor Moon? I, had, I did one, uh, one character that had, was like a monster and went, ah! Yeah, you're in Sailor yeah, Moon. you're in. <laughs> that's, that's, I have my notes on either side of the screen. Oh, that yeah. barely counts. But, but you're in it. We you got, overlap. You, you got paid for it. That's work. I did get paid for it. All right. All right. That's work. It's on IMDb. And while we just discussed, some of it might be wrong, but hey, you're getting more credit for stuff instead of less credit yeah. for stuff. Fair. And it's then we'll only... talk about Mortal Kombat. <laughs> <laughs> you did the motion capture for Sonya Blade. Yeah. That was, that was really great. You were amazing. Thank you. I had fun, I'm told. Um, so now we did talk a little bit about Slayers, which we kind of think takes everybody back to Slayers. There were Slayers Try, Slayers Next. And you guys talking Lisa, oh my gosh, and um, Veronica. That just, 
<sighs> it seems like such a it seems like so long ago, but you watch it back now and the animation and the voice acting still holds up. Oh, good. Aww. That was a fun one. That was really super fun to work on. And so, um, Tara, when you were when you were doing your live action cartoon, Cartoon Fridays. Yes. Uh, it's <laughs> kind of crazy to think that we actually have you on on video now. That I, I'm sure I watched that, but I don't remember that specifically. I remember the cartoons, but I'm sure I saw right. you a lot back. I'm when sure I, was I on I'm there. sure I annoyed you in between the cartoons during the commercial breaks. <laughs> I would explain that to people. I'm like, I'm the annoying girl on in between the cartoons that you're trying to watch. You Sorry. were not. No, I'm, no, it was. No. You were honestly so cool. And I just wanted to be a cool babysitter. That was my whole goal when I was working uh, for Cartoon Fridays. Um, oh, wait, sorry, I just got to click this thing on my screen. Yep. Um, you were, you were a cool babysitter and you were fun to watch. Thank you. And you interviewed George Lucas. I interviewed, yeah. The interviews were the most fun part of that for me, I think. I got to interview people I, I never could have imagined. We got to go to Skywalker Ranch and sit down with everyone there and uh, Beth. I, so, so many people. Charles Barkley uh, used to shoot down the hall from us, so he would, he came on our show he would tease me. Um, it was weird. Like I had a weird relationship with, with Charles. I didn't know who he was. I was literally, I was in my dressing room one day doing a fitting mm -hmm. and I get a knock on the door and they're like, Hey, uh, you got to move to a different room. And I, and I saw this big guy and I walked down the hall and I said, some athlete needs my dressing room. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, that's, that's Charles Barkley. I'm like, okay, where should I go? <laughs> like I did not, I know nothing about sports. <laughs> Nothing, but we became buddies. It was really cool. It was, I mean, he wouldn't remember me now, probably, but it was cool at the time. Wow. wow. Do you have pictures with Charles Barkley? Oh, yeah. He must be eight feet taller than oh, you. Oh, yeah. We looked ridiculous standing next to each other. <laughs> that was the kind of the fun of it. Yeah. I, I remember one day he wasn't there, and I like went into my dressing room, and his stuff was still there. So I put on his jacket and was like walking around him. <laughs> Oh my God. I probably could have gotten in a lot of trouble. <laughs> so yeah, I used to put oh, on his man. clothes. <laughs> That's the best. I wish you'd kept that. I do too. Oh man. I should have. I did. Again, like when you're in the moment and when you have certain jobs, you don't think of things you should really document. Like again, like Pokemon, like I should have had a list, but I should have kept that jacket. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, who knew? I left him one of yours. <laughs> <laughs> he did. He walked into my, my, so obnoxious, but I had a whole room of clothes there. Like, and he would, he started picking things up and like playing with, he was hilarious. Like he was so much fun. He just literally would follow me around the halls and cheat, make fun of me. <laughs> wow. You'll have to tweet a picture of you and him together just so we can get that scale. Yeah, I'll find it again. Yeah. Just for, cause why not? Yeah. The other day we were playing trivia online. My boyfriend and I play online trivia. And uh, the question was like, who was known as the round mound of rebound? And I was like, Charles Barkley. <laughs> the only thing I know. And everyone, like not everyone, because we were it was virtual. But he was like, why do you know, <laughs> you know that? I was like, oh, we're, <laughs> we're friends. <laughs> we're friends. We go way back. Maybe we'll talk about that later. <laughs> uh, um, now, and... Megan, one of the other ones, obviously I showed my tattoo earlier. You were in Naruto, uh, yeah. Shizune. Now, unfortunately, this is not Shizune, this is Hinata, but, because uh, she was my favorite, but. Um, yeah. I can have a couple different favorites here. You're the only one. You can, have, have, you can have many favorites. Uh, absolutely. Oh, I was mad that you didn't have Megan's picture. I wasn't mad that it wasn't um, me. Okay. And that one, we think of, when people think of mainstream anime right now, it's Pokemon, Naruto, One Bleach. So because you've been in this industry a long time and obviously Naruto a little bit later than Pokemon, what is it now of uh, being, your characters essentially being synonymous with anime? What it, What's that feeling like? Oh, I'm, I'm so lucky and I'm still surprised. Um, when I go to do a job, I have no idea what's going to be popular and what's not. So I'm constantly, 
I'm constantly surprised and I'm constantly just feeling so lucky to be a part of things. Um, when I started doing Bleach, I didn't, I came in later to the series and um, one of my cousins actually saw that I was involved and she sent me a text and said, oh my God, you're in Bleach. And I said, yes. I don't even know what that means. And so I had to quick <laughs> research it and be like, oh, this is a whole thing and I get to be a part of this. So it's just, um, for me, it just feels like incredible good luck. Um, I mean, I, not that I didn't work hard or, or you know, Earn it. work hard. Not that I didn't strive at my acting craft, but the fact that I get to be a part of this world that already exists well beyond me mm -hmm. is um, just a blessing. Yeah, and it's strange too to because we were both pretty young when we did Pokemon, and I think once I realized how big it was, I thought, "Gosh, I we, we peaked," <laughs> but not not just that, not not really like that. But I thought I better enjoy this because the odds of being involved in something this big are very rare. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, yeah. So let's take a minute and and love it and enjoy it because to be part of a franchise that is going, going to live past when we live um, right. is, is very lucky. And um, yeah, I, and I remember even during some Pokemon sessions, uh, I think it was Pokemon, Jim, one of our directors said, think about creating a voice that's gonna sustain time. Like think about, like there are voices, there's Daffy Duck, there's, you know, there's voices that someone else comes in and does that voice. And that that's happened to us now at this point. We've done voices that are part of like a canon and um, that's that's heady stuff to think about. Yeah. Right, you actually are a part of history, even though it's, <laughs> so it's it might not be in history books, but if you say anime, people will know who you are, who you voiced. And yeah, that it is truly amazing that that it has a sustainability and whether in the future, if it continues to grow and grow and be even more mainstream than it is now or not, there will always be that link of, of your characters. Yeah. Um, and because you both, you both were in Pokemon and then, you know, obviously about a year later after you recorded, you found out how it started to pick up steam and get bigger and bigger. And then you're a part of Yu-Gi-Oh! How was, and um, how was that, I guess, transferred into, you recorded it and you're like, will this be as big? And then when it was as big again, you're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe we did it again, sort of thing. How was that? We were recording a lot of shows. Yes. Yeah. There, I mean, four kids was like, there was four kids in Central Park Media and we would kind of bounce between them. And there were so, and. I, the sad thing is I don't think, none of us were like big anime fans at the time. So we didn't know what was gonna be bigger, but we would bounce around from show to show to show so much that yeah. um, I almost didn't even in my mind keep track of what hit and what did it. Like, no, I mean, there was a show called Funky Cops that we dubbed. I don't think anyone's ever seen that. Like uh, there was, we knew it was all like, all right, so a bunch of those will be on Saturday mornings. That's really cool. I don't, there was no Twitter or social media. So right. you're saying how big Yu-Gi-Oh was. I don't think I got it. I don't think I understood. Did yeah, you? I really didn't know. I didn't, I didn't understand any of it. I, I was invited to a Pokemon convention a, a couple, maybe a year or two after we knew that Pokemon was a thing. And I was blown away. I didn't know this world existed. And that was when I really learned more about anime. And that's when I, um, I was really humbled by it. I, I was, Crispin Freeman was there. It was oh. the first time I met him and I was on a panel with him and I was just quiet the whole time. Cause I was like, he knows, he knew his, he was one of the few that probably really knew his stuff about anime. Oh yeah. And people yeah. were like, so what, um, what do you, what do you hope, what manga do you hope gets turned into a show next? And I just wanted to crawl under the table. I was like, yeah. I, I don't know. You tell me. I don't, you know, I was so embarrassed that I didn't What do you that. think? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And Chrisman was like, well, let's let Megan answer. She hasn't. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was like, such a sweetheart. 
uh, all of them because <laughs> yeah. in that uh, first and second the original series of Yu-Gi-Oh which was like five series in the one in the first one where you were Mokuba and you were Mai it's mm. it's kind of crazy like there's a lot of voice actors share similar shows and because you guys don't see each other it's not like a round read like American cartoons are, which is a shame, but I know so many people, there's so many bit parts, so many voices that you just throw in here and there. It can't be like a radio play. Um, it's just kind of crazy to think that you share so many characters and they have so many interactions, but a lot of times the voice actors never meet them. They might just pass each other in the hallway. Oh, hi, how are you doing? It's like, that was, you know, they play your love interest in this episode or yeah, whatever. No and it's just no idea what's going on. Right. It's it's such a crazy culture of being a voice actor like that. Totally. And totally. Anime we is we did get to know each other eventually. Like, how did we? Parties. There were parties. There were parties. Yes. Oh. That was it. Or like if I was early for a session and, you know, there was like a kitchen. Sometimes <laughs> we'd talk. Um, but I, you know, it's funny. I did, uh, Veronica and Megan and I did something together a few weeks ago and we have this bond because I, I think there's so few people who understood what it was like to be part of this from the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, so I think we wanted to be friends. I think we sought each other out because we're like, wait, are you experiencing this thing? Like, you know, yeah. like, you know, I had little cousins who were watching the show and were getting excited about it or people would assume I was very wealthy and I definitely <laughs> wasn't. But there's like these kind of shared, yeah things that we have that no one else will ever really get you know like eric stewart's like a brother to me like do i talk to him every day no but I, there's just there's no amount of time that can go by with and we still feel like yeah. it was yesterday so that's we're i think we did a pretty good job of um of making sure we had friendships even though we weren't together all the time yeah yeah but, uh, oh geez that's mm -hmm. because um, now, because um, you're playing characters like Mai or your characters in Bleach, these very strong, strong-willed, I mean, sometimes it's little boys you're playing, but what has been, how many people have come up and said your character has, like, made me want to be, like, a better person? Like, Mai, Mai was very strong-willed, and she was the only real female duelist that was ever on. And she had to be tough. That was her main story arc is that she didn't need anybody. But in the end, she's like, no, I actually do. Has, um, is that, does that happen often enough where people come and tell you that the characters have affected their lives in that great way? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, Tara, you too, right? Yeah. Yeah. With, oh, I think yeah, sure. from Pokemon, Richie, probably. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, they learned about friendship or, <clears throat> you know, all these these shows do have lessons built into them. So yeah. um, even if our character wasn't the one that they learned it from, they were part of that story where that happened. Uh, mm -hmm. So if we're helping in some way, these kids grow and learn and, you know, it, you know Mokuba was the quintessential little brother. So mm -hmm. I, you know, maybe he didn't teach them anything, but they were related. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And for my, I mean, just to be the, the tough dualist woman in a group of all men, um, you know, for women who were into it, uh, my had to be like the color guard and, uh, and yeah, no, I've definitely heard that at, at conventions and it's been so satisfying. It makes me really proud. It makes me really proud to have been a part of that character. Yeah. That's what, you know, if we, I try and go to many conventions as I can. And when you see people and they ask questions um, in panels and they just see who relates to who and maybe sometimes you would or wouldn't expect that. Um, like my tattoo, these two, because they're strong women that, you know, yeah, Ash is the main character and he always has, but he always has somebody right next to him. If he didn't and it wouldn't work, oh. then it's more kind of a- That's great, that's a great point. You can only develop that character so much. And then like with Maya, like you said, it's, she was the only, she was the only professional out of all the, I don't know about the, about the current seasons, but the first two, three, four full series, 
there's only one in each. And that's, it's sad to think about that, but it's good that there is still that representation and that you're playing these strong characters to get that out there is, even though this is a show you're watching to have fun, you're still learning and you're still being affected by it on, right. on enough of a level. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so a couple, uh, Tara, you were just saying how some people forget the role, or like even you forget roles that you're a part of. One that I don't, I've never forgotten is <laughs> fighting foodons. <laughs> I loved that. I loved that show. There was, there's, some, there's a lot wrong with that show now in retrospect, but um, just some of the uh, racial stereotypes and things. But really, Overall, I, I did not. I did not, I was not aware of that at the time. Yeah, there's one I'm thinking of, but um, I, 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 you know, listen, I would, I'm a utility player for a lot of the shows I do. Like today, my job is like incidental roles that I'm going to record. I have no idea what I'm going to do. That, I got to do the lead on that show. So it was the one show that I actually knew the whole plot. <laughs> I knew what was going on. And there's a difference when you're going into a job like that because you're just much more invested. Um, so for, that, that's one of the reasons I really enjoyed it because I just knew what was happening. It was also crazy <laughs> and weird and food fought each other. And I mean, it was great. I, I didn't know you were the lead in that. See, no wonder you Maybe know. Maybe your children should watch that. Yes. Oh, my, neighbor, my neighbor is vacuuming his balcony. Um, my neighbor is vacuuming his balcony. It happens like once a day. It's loud. Sorry. Mom, I'm trying um, to do an interview. Yeah, I'm so worried. <laughs> Doesn't he know? Um, Fighting food on. Well, I did meet someone who became a chef because of that show. <gasps> oh, wow. So that was cool. I forgot about that. The best. I, like, that made me want to cook, and now I'm a professional chef. I'm like, where's dinner? <laughs> um, that didn't happen. Um, but yeah, yeah. No, so that is someone, so good. I wonder, like, how many other kids started cooking because of that. Mm. So neat. That's really cool. I didn't learn to cook a thing from that show, so I'm glad someone did. <laughs> <laughs> um and then megan a couple of ones well i don't know how well they are like deers and girls bravo like i did watch those shows and usually people are like what show there's yeah. i mean there's so many now and you'll see like the mainstream ones but those like really fill out your collection like oh i can you know if dragon ball is on or you have a couple of dvds but there's so many like one piece has a million episodes at this point so it's nice to go to a series or a set that's like one season, two seasons, and you just get to fully watch and develop those characters. So I, I like that, but then they're usually like a little obscure. Those are very obscure, and I'm very flattered that you know those. Thank you. Um, and they were so much fun to do. Again, those were like in the early days when we were still learning about anime and figuring stuff out. And, the, and those are particularly like very, um, I think they're manga based. I assume mm -hmm. they look like manga. Um, very lovely pieces, you know? Yeah. I like them. And then we go a little bit into voicing characters in video games, because not only like um, Naruto video games, and I believe the Bleach video games as well, you do character voices for. And Tara, I actually have a, I don't know where it is, but it's an um, actual box of Pokemon Snap, and the fact that you do Bulbasaur in that too. Cool. Um, we know I think that I've never played that game. I've been told I would like it. Oh, it's, you're just taking like pictures it. of the Pokemon yeah, and finding I would like that. them out. And to get Bulbasaur out, I think you have to either throw apples or a ball at him to get him to come out of a little tree trunk. But cool. That sounds adorable. Yeah. With most of those being like reactory, like you're getting hit, how, and you have to do obviously like a bunch of takes in between because, like, oh no, you need to like get hit harder, get hit softer. What's, what, is there a different process of recording that as opposed to full lines of dialogue? Is it easier or, or harder? Uh, y yeah, it's definitely a different process. Um, we know way less about what the finished product's going to be with games, right? Okay. Totally. We kind of just have a, you know, there is some dialogue. It depends what, what game you're doing, obviously, but literally there's like a list of efforts for what, you know, like big, medium, small medium large sorry and um you don't know what they're gonna getting hit in the face um getting hit in the neck <laughs> yeah 
getting set on fire, um, getting set on fire medium, getting set on fire large, like, and we don't know what they're going to keep. And sometimes they don't know. So you're basically giving them a library. Um, they sometimes call it that, like, give us a library of giggles, give us a, you know, not for Bulbasaur necessarily, but for other characters, um, literally any kind of reaction they might possibly need so they don't have to pay you to come back. So you kind of give them Tool. endless <laughs> yeah. reaction noises. Um, so, so I've gotten kind of used, used to that over the years, whereas a script for an anime, especially an anime, because it's already been done, is pretty set in stone. Um, they know what they need. Whereas the video game is kind of evolving, unless it's, you know, again, it's an import and you're dubbing it. Um, but even then, sometimes they're not sure which one they're going to go with. So right. kind of right. just give them lots of options so they can play around. Right. And even I've done games where, you know, they'll have the dialogue, but sometimes they even, they'll, they'll sort the Excel spreadsheet. So they just have your lines. And sometimes the, the director or the writer will be there to tell you why you're saying line. Sometimes not. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it can be a little removed. Yeah. The line can... Now people realize that, that games are a big deal. You know, they're making more than movies are now. So people are putting more attention into them. But at the beginning, at least, they're like, Rah. whatever. Like sometimes there'll be a note like, hostile. Like, say this like you're hostile. Yes. And then it'll be like, but I'm saying, where's yeah. my... So, yeah, I don't know. Like it's so it doesn't sound like a line that should be hostile, but you're like they're like let's just get it a few ways. <laughs> like, so, it's, yeah, but it's I mean it's fun. It really it it it's a test of your acting ability, and it and that's more fun than yes. It's more like an acting class, right? Yeah. Say that's the sky it. is blue, as if you hate the sky. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, <laughs> great exercises to do then, I guess. Yes. And if you ever, for either a video game or maybe for a part, like we know sometimes people are talking, um, talking with their mouth full or they're drinking or something like that. And especially kind of connected to video games. Do you ever have to go like method and maybe like hit yourself a little bit? Or when you're talking, I know like Tom Kenny, he shakes his vocal cords like that to do SpongeBob's laugh. Um, are there, has there been any characters where you've had to do that? That's been a little bit challenging. I I have like put a little bit of food in my mouth when I've really needed to. Usually I can fake it. Um, Burping. Sometimes they want you to burp. Ugh. Yeah. And I'm like, they're like, we'll try to get yours. We can get someone else to do it if we need to. So I'm like, okay, give me like all the soda. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but definitely mouthful, definitely like sipping, kissing noises. You kiss your fingers um, for that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking like a lot of eating, slurping, gulping. Yeah. Oh, sm I just do a, a cigarette the other day in a live action dub. Do it. And mm -hmm. they, well, not the other day, it was a couple months ago when we were in studios and they gave me a, a pen. They like took the pen. It was like a hollowed out, just part of a pen. And they're like, use this. Mm -hmm. So that makes a smoking inhalation sound. I don't advocate smoking. I'm just saying that is how we got the sound. Stuck on a pen instead. It's not like One Piece where they removed all the cigarettes, right? Did they do that in our our One yeah. Piece for kids? I think they removed them and yeah, it was a lollipop stick. Yeah, because yeah, he always had the lollipop, so it, that's why they got around it. Oh, for okay. kids. <sighs> that's okay, actually look, it was Saturday morning. I'm glad they didn't keep the cigarettes, but well, yeah, <laughs> people were definitely upset. That's I was just starting to watch um, Card Capture Sakura on Netflix, and I was like wait, this isn't the opening I'm used to. Wait a minute. And so this is the, it's a different dub because the WB one was so shortened and so edited and so many other things. It's not the same show. Oh. And I was kind of sad, but I'm like, I get to experience it in a different way now. Oh, interesting. Yeah. That's wow. what I tell people who are mad about One Piece. I go, hey, there's two different versions. You can, you know, one for when you were not ready to watch the adult version. Like, yeah. No, it's odd to me when people get very angry mm. about i i get that it's their you know they feel a tie to the original and i, yeah. I understand i get that part of it but i was like but it was also got a lot of kids into anime that would never have watched anime it was a gateway for a lot of them right um, that's, that's so. right 
I'm I'm mad about Star Wars though. I'm, I'm mad that Lucas changed Star Wars, and I I just keep thinking somebody's gonna find an old copy of the film. Tara, when you went to Skywalker Ranch and were interviewing George Lucas, you should have told him. <laughs> I should no. have said that. Yes. No. <laughs> Get a rolled up newspaper. Pop him on the head. Down, George. Down. I I will try to get back in. <laughs> <laughs> it's never going to happen. George, follow um, up question. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, George? Um, yeah. <sighs> what a cool place that was, though. Yeah. So really? really? Megan, I wish I had, I wish I had known how angry you were then. Yeah. Yeah. I would have, I would have sent you with some messages. Yeah. I was it, one of my best behavior. <laughs> so we have the, obscure anime a couple i was only able oh, to yeah. find a couple like really obscure credits that i thought were interesting i mean normally like you said you're kind of doing incidentals or background characters that have a line here two lines there but you know they're just background noise um one for you tara was the um barbie dream house i guess are you oh, playing yeah. what are you playing oh, the actual house is it like an ai house yeah well there's there's two, this is so much, so many different versions of Barbie. Megan, your kid should actually would no, like. No, um, I know this. I should ask me a trivia question. <laughs> so there's Wait, the Barbie house life. Noises? Well, there's Barbie life in the life dream in house. The greenhouse, yes. And I was not the house in that. I was summer in that. But mm -hmm. your girls would like that show. You it's got funny. to see a, a Barbie friend. Oh, it was so much fun. And now I work on, and I work on the Barbie mermaid thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, Topia or mermaid something? Topia. Something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then Barbie Dreamhouse Adventures. That yes. was the house. That's it. Much better. And I play like an ant. I play a bunch of different roles, but the, the it's basically just like an AI voice. It's just like activating, you know, like I'm trying to think what I say. Uh, alarm set. <gasps> Take Barbie's clothes. Um, you know, it just very. And again, a lot of that is because you were there that day. Like, like, oh, we're having you come in to do this. Can you try the house? Can you try? <laughs> Can you try the house? So, the house? Such normal. Well, and sometimes I don't know what gets kept. So like, I'll make a list now of what I play, but I'm like, you know what? Like I came in once, I'm trying to remember who it was it, that replaced, like, like, oh, Tara, we were having you come in to do this, but so-and-so, and it was some dude, um, was he, and this was for a Barbie thing, um, had some extra time. So we had him read it and we think we're going to keep him. <laughs> <laughs> there was no, there was no sugar coating. No, but which is fine. It wasn't like no, I had it done awesome it. That you did it, but we asked someone else to do it, and his was better. <laughs> no, I hadn't That's... read it yet, so it was okay. Oh, 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 so, like, okay. I was, I was walking in there like, you know what? I it wasn't. I don't think it was them. Distant. It was someone who I it was. It might have been Johnny Bosch or someone. Someone who was really good. Mm. And I said, don't even bother having me read it. Like, I'm sure right. he was great. <laughs> like, it's just being there. Um, and that's really what Pokemon was. And then, again, that's what a lot of the Barbie stuff is, especially when you're incidental utility person. Um, that's what happens. So okay. sometimes you'll ask me and I'm like, I don't know what ended up in the final. I don't want to say I played this yet because right. I right. gotta watch it. <laughs> So I can I just jump on there? I cool. did. Um, speaking of not knowing if I got into the final, I have never done an original animated feature because those are really hard to get, especially now. Like um, big stars do original animated feature, right. and I got cast in one, and I was like, well, "That's kind of surprising." Thank you. I was the voice of a computer in Escape from Planet Earth, and <laughs> I, yeah, yay! And then. I heard a story, someone else from my agency also got cast in it. And then I heard from him that he had been recast and that some celebs took over his part. And I just thought, uh, I'm not going to tell anybody I'm in this until I go to the movie theater and I see it. So I went to the movie theater by myself, you know, just in case. <laughs> and I watched it and I'm like, wow. Oh, and I heard another computer voice and I was like, oh. and then and then I heard a, a computer voice and I was like, oh, those are my lines. I got replaced by Ricky Gervais. Oh. Okay. And I was like, well, you know, I can't be like, wow, you know. How great dare they? Or Tara Strong got my part and I feel really bad. I'm like, I got replaced by Ricky Gervais. And Did you tweet at him then? Like, was that better. was my line. <laughs> yeah. So you did make it in though. Huh? The story, But you are in it. I was, I'm in it as additional voice. So apparently I did something. 
Okay. Okay. Or they just threw me a bone and left me, left my name in. But so Ricky um, Gervais definitely took your lines. Ricky Gervais took my lines. But he, okay. here's what happened. I read what was on the script because I am sort of a, I do what I'm told, right? <laughs> uh, um, what was the line? Like, I, uh, you know, the guy's trying to escape from the ship and the computer says, I think you said, blah, you know, well, what was the line? I think you said deactivate right ricky gervais says i think you said banana <laughs> and that's much funnier right <laughs> <laughs> so i'm like ah yes because yeah. he can get away with that we have yeah. to be still a little careful <laughs> right i was a very good well-behaved computer ricky gervais was ricky gervais and he was awesome so that's my line now sometimes i'm in the movie, sometimes I'm the voice of a computer, sometimes I'm a nurse, and sometimes I'm replaced by Ricky Gervais. <laughs> <laughs> that should be on your business card. I would. Yeah. Um, so now we covered all the the shows, the obscure. Now both of you have just been and we're finishing with video games here in the Final Fantasy VII remake. Yeah. Yeah. Did you, did you have any? Um, like, love, did you play the game before? Any love for the game before? And then, of course, because people have been waiting for this game for since the original came out, essentially. Um, and then on the day it was released, you know, both of you let people know that you were in it. How has that reaction been? I suppose that's something that's been building up for so long and that it seems like incidental voices, but people obviously tweet at you and like, was this you? And you're like, yes, it was. Yeah, go. Oh, uh, you know, it's funny. Sometimes when I'm incidental voices, I, I will make a list of like who I was. And for that game, like I, there were so many incidental voices in that game that said such similar things. And, you know, obviously we don't have, I don't have a copy of that script. We don't have any of that. Mm -hmm. So my stuff is such, so general that yeah. I could not even tell you if it was me, but it was cool to be part of something so enormous. Yeah. And that was so beloved. So I was really psyched to be part of it, but I contributed very little to that <laughs> in the scheme of things. Same. And I didn't um, get to see, did you get to see any video? Like I didn't get to no. see any artwork. No. I didn't get to see anything. And the, the lines were so general and so all over the place and not a particular character. Like it was, yeah. it jumped. I'd have two lines as woman C. Yeah. Mm. yeah it was like citizen 12. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and th there was no identifying it. So, um, yeah, it, I haven't had anybody asking me like, are you this person? I've had people say, who are you? And I'm like, yeah. oh gosh. excellent question. And I respect that question. And I wish I could answer that question. Yeah. I had a friend say, I think I spoke to you in the marketplace. And I was like, it's entirely possible. <laughs> yeah. That happened. I was like, if you record what you saw, I will confirm or deny. Mm -hmm. But I can't, it was, and again, you know, a game like that should be a well-kept secret, you know, so I get why, also the enormity of it. I mean, I, I remember oh, yeah. they had three studios running at once, I think, at least oh. three or four studios running at once, and then they still had to um, push it. And I think a lot of that was because of recording the dub stuff. Um, hmm. it, it was a vast, huge project. Yeah. And I was so excited. I was, I was really like, I was really proud. And then to see the list of additional voices, oh. I was like, wow, this is some fine company to be in. It's, yeah, it's crazy to think like with these shows or like even like Barbie, we were talking about before, how, I mean, a, a lot of adults are not watching Barbie unless their kids are, but then you'll hear a voice and it's like, I know who that is. Like when you hear Monica in just a role somewhere, you're like, that's Monica, I know, Monica's there somewhere and that sort of thing. So with Tara, I mean, certainly I picked that up now too. And it's, it's just so great to know that you guys are still getting work, even if it's something we're not watching. It's that, you know. We're happy to be getting work too. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yep. And about lastly, about voices. Now, Tara, you've done quite a few audio books. Oh yeah. And yeah. I did talk to you about like how long that takes. You said it's usually about double the amount of time that the book is. Yes, that the audio book is, yeah. Uh, Megan, uh, searching audio books doesn't really show up. Have you done any of those as well? I have not. That's oh. a, an area that I never 
never dug into. I'm Sarah, get her some audiobook. I don't know if that's a, I, I, I don't wish that on everybody. It's mm -hmm. a, it's a, just a different beast. Um, and sometimes I love it and sometimes I hate it. I'll be honest. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, it's just way more work than any of the other voiceover work I do. Oh. Um, it's labor intensive. Uh, and again, when you have a great book, there is nothing better than recording an audiobook. When you have a not so great book, that's nine, 10 hours long, there's that, nothing worse. Cause on Audible, I did search your name and one of the books you recorded was essentially 20 hours long. Oh yeah. And you're saying it took you two days to record this is so, no. well, took I mean. Me 40 hours. Shorefall or, and Foundry Side are probably what you're thinking of. And those are great books. Those are kind of these steampunk, really fun, novels um but we're, those are tricky too because the the author has very specific pronunciations in mind and they go against um what my natural instinct would be and and how to say the words and i love that he knows exactly what he wants mm -hmm. but i without fail i mean i might have said the word a hundred times in the book and probably messed it up every time and had to redo that sentence uh. so those books those books took me we think we scheduled for six days for both of them. And I think I did them both in five days. And those are, you know, pretty full long days of just wow, sitting wow. still and talking. It's, um, it's intense. And, you know, and one, I remember one of the books, like I'm differentiating dozens of characters and mm -hmm. the first book, I think we couldn't use accent. Like, so you were just trying to figure out ways to differentiate them without being able to use different accents. I think for the second book, we did use a couple, um, which helped. So do you, um, do you plan that in advance? Do you read through the book and plan how you're going to do each character? Or are you able to do that kind of on the fly? A little bit. Um, luckily for those, I have a director who does oh, some nice. of that work with me. I don't always have a director, but luckily I did. Um, who's in touch with the author. Um, nice. Wow. So, but it, you know, it's, uh, I plan as much as I can. A lot of it I just do come up with in the spot because I knew it was a more collaborative process for those. Um, but if it's not, I do have to, I, I skim the book. I can't, you know, it's hard to read. That's a really long book. Um, but yeah, so it depends. It, it really just depends on how much prep time I have. And, um, you know, the, the, we don't get paid for our prep time. So it's a little different. And then you're like, but wait, I yeah. spent days on this. Um, it's just a di it's a different world. It's it's still voiceover, but it's a different beast altogether. Yeah, for sure. Um, and sure, other recording that day. I'm sure uh, there are plenty of us in the community that realize how much work voicing is. Whether it's like shredding your voice for some, like uh, like Naruto. I forget her name at the moment, but obviously that's a young kid, and it kind of goes through puberty, and it's rough. I know you have said, Tara, that. Bulbasaur is a little bit rough on your voice. Um, and I made the same mistake with Yamper. Like you would think I learned my lesson. No. And I remember the audition. I went home and I was like, I was like, watch, that's what I'll get. That's the role I'm going to get. The one that hurt the most. So we know that it's very intensive. And that, <laughs> and that probably an audiobook where you're recording for so long, it would be exhausting. Yeah, I mean, I definitely pick my voices much more carefully now than I did then. I, there's a book that I did, over, a series I did over like 18 years, and I gave this policeman a voice like this. Not realizing he was, for the next 18 years, I was going to be doing that, and that he'd become a huge character in the books. And he was really funny, so it like, it worked, and I knew it was worth it. Right. But... Yeah, no, that was, and that's my own fault. There's no one to blame but myself for that. <laughs> Megan, did you have a character like that where you put in that effort and you're like, oh no, I have to do this every time now? No, no I've never, um, I've never booked a character like with, with a scratchy voice. I, I did do a video game where they had me pick up a character um, and I said, oh, how about, you know, how about a tough, tough chick like this? And um, half hour in, I was, I was hurting. And, uh, and I was like, oh, that's why I don't do that. <laughs> Note to self, never do this again. Um, yeah, because I barely made it through that session. So I, I, 
and I'll still, I'm still dumb enough to audition from time to time with a voice like that. And it's just, you know, it's just a mad hunt for more work. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes in the so moment, weird. you really do think that's what the character sounds like. It's all coming from this like very yeah. um, good place. Like, you know, yeah. I wanted you to sound like that. <laughs> right. Um, but you're not thinking of the hours and hours later because you're so in the moment. Right. Um, you think of uh, Dragon Ball Z and those guys way back in the day and just shredding their voices when they go Super Saiyan or just screaming in whatever way. And with, I can't remember if that's confirmed or not. That was it. Sean Shamal actually passed out from screaming. I'd buy that. <laughs> Sounds about right. Yep. Would, you, would you be willing to, like, going into something like that, like the next Dragon Ball series, would you be willing to go in and one of you obviously be, like, a main character where you're screaming a lot of the time? Would you want to do that? Depend on the benefits. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, sometimes auditions are, you know, the union has done a lot of things to prevent us from getting hurt in sessions, um, luckily. Um, and a lot of times auditions will say, uh, warning will contain a lot of screaming. Mm. But I've had some jobs where I, where the, it ends up being no screaming at all. You know, they're just kind of covering their bases and somewhere uh. it was, it actually did happen. I was glad I had the warning because they'll make the sessions shorter, mm. um, which is appreciated. Yeah, and they'll save the screaming till the end so that you can have no voice for the next job. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, I literally, video games, I try to plan later in the day so I can stop talking after that. Mm -hmm. You have to kind of be savvy with it. You can rest. Yeah. And now, uh, one question I always like to ask um, anybody who's at a convention or something, I don't remember if I asked you, Tara, and it's just a random weird one, is what kind of car do you drive? Oh. Um, a Subaru. I don't, I'm trying to think of, because it, it's like a great short girl car. What is it? The Crosstrek? And um, Cassandra Morris drives it. What? How is it a great short girl car? Well, it, I can see really well in it. And Cassandra Morris, who's not much taller than me, was like, this is the right car for you. And I was like, oh, whatever. I'm, uh, you know, I have my car. I was fine with it. And um, I, it's a long story. I got a car accident. Blah, blah, blah. Um, and I was like needed to test drive and I was like, oh, this is a great short girl car. Of course she likes this. And that's what I ended up getting. So we have, uh, sister cars now. Adorable. I know what Megan drives. You drive a Prius, right? I used to, but I was in a car accident too. Oh my God. Not How did you not know this? About each other? Um, so now I'm in a, a Tiguan. VW Tiguan. For, I, for if anyone actually cares about that, I can't imagine anyone cares about that. No, people are now buying Tig ones. <laughs> the stock just exploded. Yeah, no, it's crazy. <laughs> what do you drive? Um, it's a 2003 Plymouth. Nope, that was a very, very old car. Um, no, we don't. Oh my I, God. You forgot. Oh God. I would know it off the top of my head if I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't expecting to be asked a question. Right. I know, right? that funny? I wasn't expecting either. I couldn't something remember else. that. If something else. <laughs> if I remember. Uh, uh, I used to drive. Truck. You drive an ice cream truck. Yes. That's right. All That's right. a way better answer anyway. Ice cream truck. I'll edit it out to make it look like I was smart and said ice cream truck. And make the, the, the sound of the ice cream truck come through it. <laughs> that sounded more like Kirby. Yeah, fine. <laughs> um, Actually, I was recording a session with Lisa not too long ago. And the ice cream truck was in the background. She actually had an ice cream truck on her street that I could hear. And I was like, awesome. oh, that sounds really good. That's awesome. Wow. Um, My friend Brian wrote a song to the ice cream truck song, ice cream, Mr. Softy music. Remember mm -hmm. Mr. Softy? How'd it go? <laughs> New York is disgusting. Your life's a mess, I think. You need some ice cream. <laughs> oh my God, I love that. I'm stealing it. Why don't you let the silly song drive you crazy? I love that. Oh, wait, Tara, my okay. phone's ringing. Oh. I'm ignoring it. Okay. Tara, get Eric to do a cover of it. There you go. All right, wait, I'm just shutting this off. Sorry. Um, oh, yeah, Eric's band can do a cover of the Mr. Softies. <laughs> <sighs> okay. Now, the last part is, I know everybody gives you questions all the time about being voice actors. And I know the biggest one that most of them say is take acting classes. That's the most important thing. You just, so you have this foundation. I mean, sure, some people can just maybe mimic a voice, but it's not just that. 
what would be then a uh, piece of advice on that same line that's not what you give out? <laughs> oh, dig deeper. Um, second step. Uh, yeah. Step one, take acting classes. Take acting step two, classes. step three, profit. Okay. <laughs> step I'd say treat it like a business. Yeah, I'd say, I'd say, you know, as I see a lot of kids today getting into it who are just huge fans of it. I think we benefited by not being, um, by treating it like a, a, a job as opposed to our life passion was never, you know, I didn't know anime growing up. So right. it wasn't my dream to, to be a voice in anime. So for me, it, as much as I loved it, it still was a job. And I was tried, I tried to be as strategic as I could mm -hmm. with my career. Right, so maybe like people like Stephanie Shea and Crispin Freeman, who really did, it was their passion to begin with. Maybe they have, would offer different advice, but um, I would say, so then, okay, so you're already a great actor and you love acting and you still want to be a voice actor in anime, then you need to make a demo or take classes in specific to voice acting. I think you need to be in New York or LA. Or Texas. Well, yes, not during this pandemic because we're at home now. But please don't move right now. <laughs> yeah, don't move right now. There's um, online voice classes now. Mm -hmm. That might be easier. There's great coaches, um, and I just hope they're honest with people about what their potential is. That's right. why I could never teach. I would be too honest, and I probably hurt some feelings. Um, but there are great, great. You, I mean, you guys have access to things that we never had access to. These right, right. these online coaches and classes. Um, and make sure they're with people really do, if you're going to invest in those classes, cause they're not cheap, mm -hmm. make sure they're with people who are really working. And, you know, I definitely see a lot of people who, uh, used to be in the business and maybe don't understand the, the, the changes in the industry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, make sure it's someone currently working in the business that you're taking the classes from. Okay. Yeah. And now current projects we did just, uh, we talked about Pokemon. Are there any other ones? Obviously there's NDAs in that. Um, current projects you can talk about, and then any also side businesses like Tara, of course, your Etsy store. My Etsy store. It's so silly that I started a jewelry company, Looped LA. Um, but yeah, I have, um, well, first of all, watch Pokemon Journeys on Netflix right now. Pokemon um, Journeys. What? What'd you say? I just repeated what you said. Say it again. Pokemon Journeys. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's a new Digimon movie coming out. At some what? point, what? I don't know what I'm allowed to say about that, but that is a thing that will be available at some point. I think that's all I'm allowed to talk about. How about you? What are you allowed to say, Megan? I don't think I have anything. I, I don't. I, nothing that I can talk about. Huh. Nurse Joy. <laughs> what episode does Nurse Joy show up in? So we know. I can't remember if it's four or six. It's an even number. <laughs> when, when <laughs> what a I disaster. Get... No. When I get to it, I'll watch tweet you, all. Megan, okay? Just watch them all. Why would you yeah, not watch them all? That's true. Megan had children just so she didn't have to watch episodes and they could tell her when she shows up. <laughs> They're like my little managers. I decided I wanted to, I was like, oh, I know I was in Sonic, you know, the Sonic from way back. Mm -hmm. and I was oh, like, the old school, oh, yeah. I have no idea where I showed up in that. Children. <laughs> <laughs> the cartoon <laughs> please find mommy on tv <laughs> can i have i could hire them to do that can i yes or should i just have children just for that sole purpose uh you know it would be better <laughs> if you had children to be convenient, but they don't always listen sometimes you have to give them candy <laughs> <laughs> do that yeah i'm trying to think if we have anything else final fantasy i guess we could still plug that yeah you can hear us as random people mm. for sure Mm. Megan, you then should start your own Etsy store. Or Tara, you you totally. find somebody to make Nurse Joy plushies, and we can mm. fit that medium. She could sign it or have a little card, just like you do with yours. We're gonna powwow after this. Okay. Come up with something great. I'll only take five percent because I'm the middle man. <laughs> what a guy! <laughs> awesome. All right, and we just wanna. Thank you both for joining me today. It's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you. Um, everybody, make sure to follow Tara and Megan and all the links we'll put down below, um, as well as all of 
talk nerdy to me's stuff as well for amazing content like just like this and you ladies have a good day thank, thank you. you for talking nerdy to me <laughs> thank you so much this has been so much fun and remember stay nerdy planet earth stay nerdy stay nerdy <laughs> <laughs>